Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to an awesome new episode of VO Buzz Weekly. Yes, yes, yes. Jeff Nimoy on the show today. Yes. Producer, actor, director, the whole show band. Writer, Digimon you. fans are Oh my excited. God. Yes, you are. You guys yeah. are in for a treat. Let's talk to Jeff right now. Let's do it. I can't wait. Okay, guys, our guest is an Emmy Award winning producer, writer, director, and actor. Digimon fans love him and know his work. Also, Zatch Bell, Bleach, and Stitch, and so many other things. He is also the mastermind behind the healthy cooking movement, The Cooking Caveman. I can't wait to talk about that. <laughs> We're so excited to get buzzed with the totally awesome Jeff Nimoy. Hey, how's it going, yes. guys? Nimoy! Yeah, hey there, buddy. I What's up, man? Good to see you. Same here. I've wanted to be on this show for a long, long time. Chuck, you're a, a demo legend in this town. Thank you. All, Thank my, you. all the actors I've talked to, have, all you know, all the top actors have your demos. And Stacey, what, what red-blooded male wouldn't want to meet Stacey? <laughs> Hello. I mean, look at her. She's I gorgeous. Agree. I agree. I the green-blooded ones don't like me, but the red ones uh, do. <laughs> I've got some green-blooded in my history. So yeah. uh, <laughs> I told her that earlier she had my microphone on her. I know. She I was it said, confused. It said Stacey, but it said Chuck. Yeah. I said, yeah. listen, I, if you want to trade places, I'll totally <laughs> trade with you, man. I'd rather be a hot chick that everybody loves than some guy who produces <laughs> demos for only, people like you know starts early. people's dreams yeah <laughs> oh, that's a crap crap profession hot um, is better hot is no, better, but it's good. better. Yeah. we've been we've been kind of circling around each other for a while finally yeah. we got it to work out so thanks for being here well thanks for having me like We're i said i told you earlier i I'm a huge fan of the show. All of my Thank friends you. have been on the show. And Were you wondering why you <laughs> hadn't been on yet? I'm wondering why you keep ignoring Aww. my emails. Like, please, you know, if you're looking for a very little known voice actor, <laughs> but sort of a mediocre known voice director, yeah, yeah. you know, please have me on. That's fine. Hardly. Yeah. And you finally hit the middle. So, thank you. Oh, congratulations. my gosh. Exactly. <laughs> well, look, we the, tell Digi the Digimon fans around the world are going, no. Yeah, I do exactly. You we are tell quite everybody the, uh... if you email us yeah. and you're cool, right. we're going to let you on the show. It's some point, but that's the fact is you have to be cool. Well, I hope I live up to your standards. You, well, you yeah. already have. Thank you. Without even knowing. Yeah. Thanks. Ah. Um, so I let's get. I keep very good records. So. Let's get into yeah. it, man. Let's I talk about everything. steak. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get to that. Cooking K. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Um, uh, so uh, you graduated from NYU. Yeah, I went so, to the Tisch School of the Arts. Okay. Had a big graduating class of famous people and me. <laughs> there was Adam Sandler. Wow. Phil Hoffman. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God rest his soul. Yeah. Who uh, was Phil Hoffman back in college? We mm -hmm. did a play together. We were good buddies. Kristen Johnson from Third Rock from the Sun. Yeah. A lot of people. Jessica Heck from uh, Breaking Bad. And then there was me that came along. <laughs> and then Titus was me. <laughs> Titus Welliver. Yeah. You know, really big star. That's These cool, were all my man. friends. Listen, yeah. NYU is now a slouchy place. So if you actually got through to the little uh, yeah. tassel changing thing, <laughs> right. I think you did, probably. Did you go to like university parties with all these slouches? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sandler and I were really. Sandler? Sandler and I used to hang out in his oh, dorm gosh, all the time. We were good have, friends. Like, insane times, right? Yeah. I cannot tell half the stories. I about know you can't. Can you tell like one quarter of it? No, no. Not if I want to stay No, because I was at Juilliard with, you know, some high profile people oh, that right. are, but in the day they were people that just wore sweatpants and right. hung around. Exactly. But yeah, it's funny wow. when you think about the times you had before we were all. Yeah. So how did you go, go from so drinking? When you, we sobered up. From yeah. drinking yeah. every night with Sandler. Yeah. To, to, to <laughs> anime and voiceover. Like how did that. It's hit? a long, strange uh, trip it's been. Uh, I could not get arrested as an actor after NYU. I tried mm. forever. And then someone came to see a comedy show yeah. I did. Uh, uh, right here, the LA Connection. Okay. Plug, they'll love that plug. Yeah. Um, right here on Ventura Boulevard, and where I met a lot of uh, people that I'm still in touch with today. Anyway, uh, a woman who is casting a cartoon, Mutant League, based on the video game, yeah. came to see me. I was doing a lot of celebrity impress impersonations, yeah. a lot of different uh, accents and dialects, and. And you were sober. And I was sober. Good. Uh, it was rare. Good. <laughs> mm, good. Good, good scotch, Speaking by of. Mm. He got tired Jeff of brought, Jeff brought his own libations for the mug. No, just kidding. Okay. It's my own brand of yeah. alcohol. Um, so, you know, I started working in voiceover. And those doors just kept opening for me and opening for me. And then I pitched a, a show to Fox Kids. And I went from being an actor to the producer. Mm. Like the, the people that used to hire me were now working for me. Yeah. It was kind of a straight, now, now, crazy now how trip. How does that happen? Yeah. How do you go from how being. Does, yeah. Because there's probably out yeah. there yeah. people right now that are going, like, wait I'll a minute. Do that. Yeah. I don't want to be. <laughs> how do you go from being an actor right. to being a producer? Well, A, you have to be a bit driven. 
to be in this business. You know yes, all the successful pe yeah, people yeah. that are on this show. Yeah. are We've got these A-type personalities. We're focused, we're driven, mm -hmm. uh, and networking is everything. And on this cartoon, uh, Mutant League, I met Doug Stone. Have you ever mm, had Doug yeah, Stone absolutely. on the show? Mm -mm. We have not, but I used to work with Doug all the time. Yeah, he's really he, talented. Great guy, yeah. he, one of my oldest friends in LA. He would be really great to have on the show. He's got he tons would. of stories. Yeah. Um, so Doug said <clears throat> he knew I was struggling. Like I was, I literally could not, I was living out of my car. Mm. I'm not exaggerating. Mm. I was physically living in my car when I got that job. And I was telling Doug during one break, you know, how, what a struggle it's been for me. Yeah. And he said, uh, can you dub? Do you have any dubbing experience? And I said, uh, well, you know, we do this bit at the LA Connection where we take away all the sound and we put our own comic comic dialogue onto a, a movie and we do it live in, in front of a, an audience. Right. And so I thought that was dubbing. I said, yeah, I've got a lot of dubbing experience. <laughs> So he said, I'm going to introduce you to some people over at Saban Entertainment, which later on became mm -hmm. Fox Kids. Yeah. So I went over there. He introduced me to Rita Acosta, who's now Rita Magicut. And uh, she would hire me for these little tiny bits and little anime things called, like, Honey Bee Hutch. And I can't even remember half of them. Bit the Cupid, some kind of panda show. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah. It was, and I'm watching it going, oh, who's watching this crap, you know? Little right. did I know it would become my career, you right. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I did that for a while, and I just kept meeting more and more people, and then I met uh, an executive at Fox Kids, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm actually jumping a whole thing. I, I moved Go to Go back, New wait, 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 let me. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I moved to New York for about nine months, uh, right before that all happened, uh, after the Mutant League, and just as my voiceover career was starting, I moved to New York because I chased a girl. She got a job mm. in New York. Oh, you chased I know. a girl. Oh, I know. Jeff. We were living together here. I know. Oh, Jeff. I know. Uh. Some relationships don't survive the time zone. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, I went to New York and I knew no one. Really, no one. I mean, I'm from New York, but I didn't know right. anyone in the business. Including the girl in here, yeah, right? right? Especially voiceover. I didn't know anyone in the voiceover industry out there. So I was watching NFL films one day. I don't know if you ever saw NFL yeah. films, mm -hmm. but I had this idea, like, you know, just what I was doing with the LA Connection, this dubbing thing, I could take away all the sound and put a new comic soundtrack on. So I, I just pitched them the idea. I just cold called them. Mm -hmm. There was no internet even back then. I just cold called them and I said, I've got this idea. I want to send in this, uh, this video. I made a little video in my living room and I sent it in and they bought like, a, a whole series of segments from me, four minute segments for their wow. show, NFL Films Presents. Wow. And now I'm like, oh my God, now I have to actually produce it. I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> so I went and I did it and they had no idea I was a nobody living in a basement apartment off of my girlfriend. <laughs> they had no idea. Yeah, yeah. I just kept saying like, I'm this big producer. And lo and behold, I get nominated for an Emmy and you I win. You do not. I swear, he and does. I win. Weren't you nominated like three times? Three times. I worked for them for five years over that span. And That's I was nominated freaking three times. crazy, I know. man. Take crazy. that, basement. I know. You're a nut. I know. So then I come back to uh, I come back to LA, and now the, these people at Fox Kids are now seeing my demo, my Emmy Award-winning demo, yes. and they're like, we've got all these really crappy Japanese cartoons. <laughs> Could you maybe Americanize them a little bit? And uh, I said, sure, you know, and I had uh, a, a business partner at the time, and we went ahead and we sold a show to Saban Entertainment slash Fox Kids, mm. right when they were actually merging. Right. So it was right at that juncture. and. All of a sudden, I went from working for them as a lowly voice actor to an executive Emmy, producer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was crazy. That is out of control. The moral of the Hold story, on. kids. Oh, we have a moral. <laughs> we have a moral. Yeah, we have morals. If you believe it, you can become <laughs> it. That's true. If That's... you believe it, you can become it. Yes. And if you're crazy, yeah. you can make anything happen. And don't That's follow a girl one. across country <laughs> unless. You're gonna do something else. If it uh, wasn't for that girl, I would never have that. That's what I was gonna say. There See, you he go. was gonna do something else. Um, we'll be right Look back right after these messages. Full. <laughs> Let's talk about this Emmy thing here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what uh, have you made? Like any cool things happen with that? Because if you can make something happen without anything, yeah, I can imagine what you've done with one. Well, here's what an Emmy does for you. Yeah. It doesn't put any extra money in your pocket, mm. but it opens doors in terms of when you 
email someone saying, hi, I'm Jeff Nimoy, I'm an Emmy Award winning producer. Mm -hmm. They'll take that meeting. Oh, yeah. Whether right. I'm full of crap or not, they'll take the meeting. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what it does for you. It gets you a lot more meetings. You still have to sell it in the room. Yep. You still have to make it happen if you sell it, but the meetings, you know, it's very easy for me to get a meeting pretty much anywhere. That's cool. And just last year, I sold a show to MTV. Yeah. I was partnered up with uh, Broadway Video, Lorne Michaels' company, uh, and uh, my partner Nick Holly as well, who brought me into Broadway Video. And, uh, you know, they that's all because, not because I did Digimon, but because I have an Emmy. You know right. what I mean? They, yeah. It's just that cachet. Mm -hmm. Did so, you ever? Did you ever have to bring an Emmy with you to prove that you were, weren't lying or anything? Well, like that? Do you wear it? It was like a big on a big necklace. Like just, a necklace, yeah, yeah, right. Just like, uh, like instead of the yeah. clock. Yeah, instead of, right. instead of the flavor flame. <laughs> right, flavor right. Flavor. I just wear the Emmy. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, it's flavor flame. Flavor, oh, sorry. sorry, not flavor. Flava. Sorry, flavor. sorry, boy. Yeah. So, uh, well, first of all, my friends used to tease me because we were at a bar and I'm, you know, talking to a girl and they were like, "How long did it take you to mention the Emmy?" <laughs> you know, so you know, they're like it? five minutes. I win the pool. Wow, Jeff, Jeff I'm mentioned the Emmy in five That's minutes. That's restraint. Yeah. Mm. Well, the real, the real cool move is to not mention it at all, and then you go back mm. to your house, and there it is. Uh, like, yeah. That's the move. I, I'm not slick enough for that move. <laughs> <laughs> I got to mention the Emmy to get them back to the pool. Can we just need to take a shower <laughs> for a second? That's no. funny, uh, dude. But, but, you could just say, can I call you Emmy? <laughs> oh, that reminds me. <laughs> yeah. I read this uh, story once about Shelly Winters went on a job interview mm. yeah. where she had, they didn't want her, so she showed up for the, uh, the interview and she brought there two, are two. two Emmys, not just one. She brought two Emmys and put them on the desk. She brought them in a shopping bag and put them on the That's desk. Funny. And she Oscars, not Emmys. And she yeah. said, uh, here's my resume right here. You know, she just shared yeah, it. Yeah. So there I'm like, that, that's a pretty cool move. I'm going to do that. Yeah. And you I, did that? I did. I brought it to a job in Jafu. And, you know, the Emmys <laughs> have these little wing spikes, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I put my resume on that. And I brought like an oversized briefcase, yeah. like a bag, not a briefcase. And I said, they said, do you have your resume with you? I said, oh yeah, let me get that for you. Where is it? Oh, here it is. And I pick up the oh Emmy and the, the resume is skewered, sk skewered on it. And I go, here it is. Oh, it's always getting stuck on this thing. And I gave it to him. And they were not amused by the whole thing. They, they were not? They were not. Oh. I would have given you the job. What were you applying for? I don't even remember. You CEO gotta, you gotta, some like, you know, <laughs> well, Microsoft or something? You gotta forget the bad ones right away. I don't even remember You know, remember sometimes anymore. some jokes kill and some don't, so I guess. Oh. That I wasn't know. the right you I thought I was very clever, but you can be too clever sometimes. <laughs> I thought that was really, well, whoever was interviewing That's that funny. day did not have a good personality. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you. Thank oh my gosh, thanks. I love oh, cause it. Because I would have been on the floor, man. Right on. I'm on the floor now. <laughs> not really, but literally. Yeah, but I yeah. Am. Um, so cool, man. Um, so, Jeff, you have been in positions where you have to hire the yeah. right actor. Right. right. Can you kind of take us through? How do you know who's the right choice? What are some of the, th the factors, well, with talent all being equal, what are some of the things yeah. that make the difference between the one who gets it and the one who doesn't? Well, luckily for me, <clears throat> excuse me, luckily for me, I've also written most of the things that I'm directing. Yeah. So I've got it in my head a lot. Now sometimes, like with a Japanese animation thing you're adapting, they'll, the, the parent company will be like, we want a voice that sounds just like the original Japanese. Then you're sort of stuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you have freedom, like on Digimon Data Squad, which was the season five, I came back to the Digimon franchise for that season. I pretty much had carte blanche to cast it any way I wanted. So A, you want to work with people that you want to work with, mm -hmm. you know, because you don't want to be stuck in a booth for the next two years with someone that you just don't get along with. Yeah. And we all have experienced people like that. Yeah. So that's A. So if, if you, you want to give us the names of some of those, <laughs> I do, but I'm not going okay. to. <laughs> Damn. Everyone gets along with Steve Damn. Bloom. We I'm love Steve Bloom. Steve's one of my favorites. Steve Bloom's Steve. the best. Steve's, Steve's, on, Steve's in my top five <laughs> yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, good people. And Steve and Crispin Freeman, yeah. mm -hmm. two of my favorites, they are the filthiest people you've ever met in your life in the booth. Really? They will set me up for like a dirty take without me knowing it, just oh to my. crack me up. Wow. Steve, I've kind of, I kind of know his little routine. Like he'll be like, he'll look at it, 
a couple times on TV and go, I just need to look at it one more time, and now I know and he's plotting know. something, he's, right? Mm. And then he'll come out and he'll say the most filthiest thing, the most vile thing, and then we can't work for 10 minutes because we're too busy laughing. Right, right, you know? right. So right. Bloom is great, and Crispin is the same way. Crispin will really, you know, when you're not expecting it, yeah. <laughs> take a take. Now these guys, they're okay because I know they're going to get it in the next take. Right. They're not wasting time. They're just right. adding a little levity to it. Some actors I'm not so patient with, you know, mm. but so that's the first thing. You want someone that you like. And I have a, a list, just like every director has a list of their go-to people. Yeah. Steve Bloom's on that list. Crispin Freeman's on that list. Uh, Melissa Fawn's on that list. Uh, Colleen O'Shaughnessy is on that list. Mm. Stephanie Shea is on that people list. People are going to start sending you money right. now to be on the list. <laughs> Are we taking donations to be on the list? Uh, donations just are wants always... to know if he's on the list. <laughs> I know we, I'm not on the list. Are we on the list? <laughs> you both after this meeting are on the list. Oh, okay, my good. God. Okay. You both have fantastic uh, I'll take. I'll take my portion of the list and give it to her so she can be on the list twice. <laughs> well, I, know I have I'm to leaving... work on my dirty joke. <laughs> I know I'm leaving a lot of people off this list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah there are a lot of voice actors that, are friends, that right. I'm friends with in this town. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, you know, Casting is about 90% of the work. If you cast right, you don't even have to worry about it anymore. They just take to it. They just do it, you know, so right. well, you know. And Debbie Derryberry was Zatch Bell, you yeah. know, that I directed 104 episodes. And we both weren't thrilled with the project, but we had a good time, you know. And I didn't have to worry about Debbie, you know. She was such a pro yeah. that she just ran with it, you know. And I didn't have to do a lot of directing. I just, I can concentrate on some other things, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of instinctive how you know what the what you want the sound of, but mm. I also I you know this might sound crazy, but I'd rather have someone who's not so perfect that I really like to work with than someone who's perfect that it's torture to work with. Right, right, you know, right. So well, and you mentioned okay, a lot of the projects you have written as well. So mm -hmm. you get your hundreds of submissions, yeah, and you're listening. What are some things that? voice talent really need to pay attention to in that audition yeah. well, that they're missing. I mean, because we know it's like a little puzzle and there's little yeah. clues and keys and... A lot of times they'll be given just a picture of the character. Right. That is immensely helpful mm -hmm. because if I'm looking for some to cast some barrel-chested character, I want a big, booming voice. Right. I want a Fred Tattashore. I want a Jameson Price. You know, I want... I want uh, Richard Epcar, you know, I want I want something like that. So you don't want to come in with a tiny little voice to do a big barrel-chested man, right. you know. Mm -hmm. So things like that. So, but unfortunately, if that picture is not available, you just as a director have to be a great communicator, and you've got to really tell them what you're looking for exactly. But you know, in this day and age, you can at least have a picture. Yeah, most know? of yeah. the stuff nowadays yeah. will have a little yeah bit of a picture. Right. So the physicality is the physicality. is everything. You know, mm -hmm. especially in anime where the animation's done already, as opposed to original animation, yeah. where you you get a lot more freedom to create the character on the fly. Right. Animation, uh, anime, it's done. You've mm -hmm. got to match your voice to that existing character and that character's ticks and movements and things like yeah. that, you know. So, uh, and the great actors all get that, you know. What are, what are a few things that, that um, because, I mean, obviously, you know, we all know a bunch of great actors and your mm -hmm. A-list and all that stuff, but for people that aren't a, a part of that list that yeah. would like to be, right. you know, what are some things that they should be looking <clears throat> at to do in order to impress somebody like you? Okay, well, A, on an audition right, or, especially for anime, mm -hmm. Uh, your dubbing is everything. Your okay. dubbing speed. So if you're a great actor, but you can't do that acting within the lip flaps yeah. of the character, mm -hmm. you're done. Some of the greats are Steve Bloom, Crispin, Yuri Lowenthal, Yuri Lowenthal. So are you watching and reading at the same time? I am. I'm completely looking to make sure they can get those that lip sync going. Okay. So if you're not a fast dubber, that's time and money in the studio. Right. And that's everything mm -hmm. at the directing uh, level because what the actors are thinking, I'm going to do my great art. Yeah. Do a Pause. play if you're looking right, for art. Right. I've got a budget and I've got time constraints mm -hmm. and I, I need you to be great fast. fast yeah. 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 So practice at home. Turn on any TV and turn off the sound and dub and mm -hmm. you can get fast. Wow. Yeah. That's a neat That's trick. Good. Yeah. And guess what? It's free. It is. It's absolutely free. Well, not unless unless you're paying for cable. Well, then, then you could go on YouTube. The cost of cable you could go is on outrageous YouTube. these days. Go on YouTube and do it. That's true. <laughs> no, but I mean there's no there's no there's so many resources that yeah. are available now with the interwebs. Yeah. 
And there's some classes now. I think my yeah. buddy Lex Lang very cool man. class. And, okay, so if you're auditioning some actors that you right. don't know, yeah, um, that's happened, and you, that would just happen, right? And you're listening to performances of what. What are you listening for yeah. to actually help you make that decision? Okay. Like, you know what, that's something that I, right. somebody I think I want to work with. Well, for instance, on camera, you've heard the expression, the camera loves that person, mm -hmm. you know? And you don't have to be necessarily a good looking person for the camera to still love you. Gene Hackman is a great example of mm -hmm. not a great looking person, but the camera just loves him. You're mesmerized watching. Right. Gene Hackman's face, the camera loves him. The mic loves people too, they love the voice. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening for that that crispness, that, that it just jumps off the the microphone, right. you know? Uh, clear as a bell, Colleen O'Shaughnessy, just, she has this voice as clear as a bell. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Siskin, I just, uh, I, I without ever meeting him, I cast him in something once, and just like, I couldn't stop listening to his voice. You know, it was just clear and it had a, you know, it's not one of these things you can say, you need to have A, B, and C in your voice. Right. It, Either the camera, either the mic loves you or it doesn't, you know? Right. And of course, having a, a nice mm -hmm. mic will help. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that does work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it is a team effort, obviously. Yeah. You know, the engineer is I, my right hand when I'm directing. I yeah. can't do anything without the engineer. Of course. Right. And, uh, and I rely on them more than I rely on any actor yeah. to, to get a good sound. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you know? Uh, do you know what kind of microphones you prefer? Using I don't. On I'm not. Don't? Both as a film director yeah. and a voice director, I'm not a technology guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Have but you ever heard of a Neumann? You just I know. know. A Neumann. Uh, Neumann. Neumann. That's Jerry Lewis's favorite <laughs> That's microphone. That's it. it. Yeah. Well, you're on a Sennheiser. <laughs> you're on a Sennheiser mic right now, which is the Rolls Royce of microphones. That's why you sound Neumann so Sennheiser, good right now. Yeah. Thank the you. Thank you. You're gonna so just loud. watch these episodes <laughs> over and over again and be like, Wow. God, listen to my. I gotta get me one of those lavaliers and just walk around with it all the time. The soothing sounds of Jeff Nimoy. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, but I rely on engineers that are great at that. Mm -hmm. And most are, most are. Yeah. yeah. Most are, are techies. Yes, and they, they are yeah. your best friends. They are, right. Because you know, the same mm -hmm. with on camera, I rely on a director of photography who knows what they're doing, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Now, so the sound and loving the mic, what about a skill level? I mean, obviously mm. you could tell by hearing somebody perform on audition, yeah. where their skill level is at. Are you also listening for that? I am, but you know, if you're a great actor, you can get away with a, a lot of amateur voiceover work. Laura Jill Miller had no voiceover work mm -hmm. when she came to me, but she starred on Give Me a Break yep. for I think six years, seven years, eight yeah. years, She's who knows how long, yeah. yeah. So I think, I think I taught her how to dub, I'm not sure, but I think I did. I think I, was, she, I gave her the vo first voiceover job on uh, Digimon. She played Kari, and uh, and you know at times I I actually had to go in the booth once and get her to calm down. I was like rubbing her shoulders. Yeah. We were good friends. It wasn't anything crazy. Yeah. I know her boyfriend very well. Did, did, she, up, did she know hey. that you had an Emmy? <laughs> <laughs> she did once. I was massaging her shoulders. I'm like, did you I, massage did her did shoulders with the Emmy? Home with you after that. You yeah. could take the little spokes of the Emmy and yeah, massage. Like, that would really yeah. that, that, was, was a, that wouldn't be creepy at all. Yeah, that would <laughs> and that wouldn't calm her. That would get her agitated. But I remember, you know, getting her to calm down because she just like that mic, she tensed up, you yeah. know, in front of that microphone. Yeah. Um, so you can learn a lot of technique if you've got the acting chops already. Yeah. Right. So don't even come to me if you're not a trained actor. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm only looking for Can really, you say that one more time? Don't <laughs> even come to me if you're not a trained actor. Uh, I And I don't want to work with people that do it part-time, which I've also run into. Mm. Right. Uh, we had this one actor on Digimon, without mentioning any names. Yeah, I can't be here till after <laughs> five. Yeah. All that. It was even worse than that. They were like, I have to be at work at nine. <laughs> Can you come in and record me at seven? Oh my. And I'm like, no. But I can replace you easily yeah, with exactly. a thousand other actors. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can just close my eyes and go, right. Yeah, and yeah. this way I get two extra hours of sleep and everything's right yeah. in my world. Yeah. I don't know about your world, yeah. but I'm fine. That's well, with great. everything else going on, with the dubbing and the matching the flaps, I mean, you have to, the acting, you can't be, it has to be just autopilot. You yeah. can't be thinking right. about that Anime part. actors get such little credit in this town yeah. as, as a, c opposed to the people that are doing the original animation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many times it's the same person, mm -hmm. but it's so much easier to do an original animated show. You're sitting there, you've got it's people wild. to bounce off of, yeah. right. to act off of, 
And in anime, They're you're alone. They're animating to you as right. opposed right. to the other right. way around. Yeah. And oh. in anime, you're alone. <clears throat> you know, sometimes no one else is recorded, so you've got to lay the foundation for other people to act off right. of. And you've got to do it in exact sync. It's so hard. Man, and, it's tough. And yeah. they're not well paid at all. There's this thing called the SAG dubbing contract. And it pays a fraction doozy. of what yeah. uh, an original animation uh, yeah. pays for an actor. You know, right. it's crazy. And they're really good. The ones who do it really well yeah. usually do cross over because yeah. they are so good. I hear usually the producer makes all the money or is it? It's no. possible. <laughs> <laughs> but at one point, Boy, people are just gonna at love one point, you. I was making as much money producing as I was just directing for a lot less work. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a long time. Well, you know, that's good because you know why? What is the difference yeah. between the roles of a producer mm. and a director? How do, they, how do they differ? Well, producing, it's just a lot of organization. It's like, how do you produce this? There's nothing here mm -hmm. yesterday. Now you've got to get the set ready. You've got to get the cameras ready. You've got to get the mics ready. Yeah. Like you're producing. You okay. know, that's all producing. You've got to book the talent. Mm -hmm. You've got to do all the things no one thinks about when they just show up and I it's see. all there. Right. You know, right. so all those things. And you have to deal with the client which is, you know, could be major corporations like Disney and things yeah. who are very protective of their brand. Yes. And you've got to be able to play that sort of game as well, that right. kiss ass type of thing, you know? Yeah, well you said A-S-S. -S. I'm sorry, you have to kiss, you know, but. you have to play the you kiss butt. But. Oh jeez. <laughs> you have to play the kiss butt sort of game. <laughs> Kiss butt. Kiss butt. Uh, but yeah. it's really ass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, oh, I just Where noticed the green feel? apples. This is in every yeah. recording yeah. studio. And they're real. Yeah. They're real. Kiss my uh, apple, Jeff. Kiss my apple. Um, so, what do you feel like with your wiring kind of. Well, no, know? no, well, hold on. Because okay. he, he, he didn't finish that. The producing Oh, I thought, well, we, can we, we get know, off the ass to. Okay, no, we know okay, what good. the producing aspect is, right? Yeah. All the back stuff. Yes, the directing. But now they're directing. Right. Is he just basically directing and that's it, or are there other responsibilities that the director might have? Um, he or she, there are he quite a she. few women directors, yes, of fantastic course. women directors. Um, so um, you pretty much are a time manager and a money manager mm. when you're doing that with an artistic uh, integrity to the whole thing. Yeah. So you are looking for a great show, but at the same time, if I'm doing 12 takes of the same line, I've got to move on if I want to get this session finished sure. because there's budgetary concerns. Mm -hmm. the, the actor's going to run over. I've got to pay them. I don't have the time. I've got another actor coming in. There are delivery dates. There's post-production waiting for you. All of these things go through your mind. Right. Again, you know, it's hard for me to separate the producing from the directing because I usually do it all. Because you do it all. Yeah, but, um, but that's what I'm thinking about when I'm directing. I'm more concerned with the time management of the actual sessions and the money I'm paying not to go over. And get, mm. yeah, getting those recordings done. Right. Now, if in that two hours, which is a normal session, in those two hours, if I can get the greatest performance from these actors uh, possible, fantastic. Again, you cast right, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. That's 90% of your job. Keeping in mind, voice talent, we like to make it about us many times. Yes. And it isn't always about us. That was a very like I hate actors. That was actors, a loading. Yes. <laughs> wow. I don't Whoa. hate actors. Well, I don't hate boy. actors. Keep I don't. it over there. I am an actor. I bet. <clears throat> um, you, you hate the bad actors. Yeah, but but that, that that it is a partnership and the relationship yeah. between the director, the entire creative team, that you are one piece of that. Mm -hmm. What from from your position on the production side yeah. are some kind of must dos and some must avoids for talent because. Yeah. The time is so precious and so much okay. has to be accomplished. A, and we'll all say this, in fact, I think I saw Tony Oliver say it right here, be on time. Yes. Mm. In fact, be early. Mm -hmm. Be 10 minutes early. You know, What's too early? Is there a too early? No, because you're not sitting in there with me. Okay. You're in the green room. So or, you don't care as long no, as they're early. as long as they're there not when late. I'm ready for them. Yeah, it's like a dentist <laughs> office. The dentist will see you now. If there's no one there, right. yeah. you know, now I'm screwed. You know, mm -hmm. because now I've got an actor after you, and yeah, so you're it, screwing up the entire day, the whole day, yeah. right? Exactly, and that you cannot have that. Cool. So, be on time is the first thing. Um, time, like I was saying before, is everything, really. You know, it, you're a manager of time when you're directing a voiceover session. So, if you come now, you start asking all these questions. You know, not that these shows are not fantastic but we're not saving the world by recording a cartoon you know yeah. so don't come in with all this 
uh, what am, what's my motivation here right, right now? You know, get to it. Again, you know, great actor. Once in a while they might go, I, I have no idea the context of what I'm saying. Jeff, can you just fill it in for a second? And I can fill them in in 15 seconds. They go, oh, yeah, well, that makes all the difference to me. Yeah. Right. And they change it. Many times I'm not even telling them that because I'm not even thinking you're going to need this information, right. you know, because they're just, they're just good. The actors I hire are really, really yeah. good for the most part. Yeah. Um, but every now and then, even the best ones will say, what, what's going on? I'm completely right. lost and I'm, I'm sorry, my fault. And it is my fault. I should have filled them in. Because they don't have 80 scripts that they know exactly. the plot line the and all this thing. Yeah. Right. They yeah. don't know all these things. But it's the actor that wants to show me what a great actor they mm. are. You're like, what's my motivation here? What's he thinking? Like, what's... who does that? Uh, <laughs> you, you, you really? <laughs> so TMZ, Chuck. You probably directed... Tonight on TMZ. <laughs> yeah. You probably directed all the same ones in demos. Probably. And you probably know the exact mm -hmm. ones I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, I've had that. I had a person, I'm not going to say it's because he or she, literally like stand on the stool mm -hmm. like a little chicken or something yeah. and then had incense and had to do incense oh, yeah. in order to get into like a character and I'm like right. this would never fly in the real wow. world yeah. I mean you, you gotta cut this out I had a girl just audition for me once and she made me change the whole setup. The mic's not where she wants. She likes to sit. Some people oh, like to dear. stand. The lighting's not good for her. Uh, you know, the, the where the music stand is, where we have the dialogue, yeah. everything. We had to change the whole setup mm. for someone who's coming in, get out of here in 10 minutes. I got auditions. Yeah, and so that's called I knew for I was, too much maintenance. I knew yeah. right away yeah. that even if be they were the problem. best, I, would not, I was not yeah. going to hire them. Close the eyes time. and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next. Um, um, <laughs> so... Uh, so time is everything. So if they're screwing up all that stuff and they just want to, they just m maybe want to impress me with how good they are. You want to impress me? Just really do a good job and be professional. And just be quick. Be, be quick and professional. Yeah. You know, if I'm friends with you, then we, we'll have time to chit chat and all that stuff later on. Right. But don't like. So where are you from, Jeff? In the middle of everything, it's like uh, if you book the job, we'll have plenty of time to talk about all this. And not do if not, you'll you never know? get the answer from, to that uh, question. I'm from 12 to 1 p.m. That's yeah. what I'm from. Yeah, and one guy uh, he auditioned for me, and then I I hired them, and then during the the uh, the session, he he said to me. Were you, after the audition, you said to me, that was really good, you have a really good voice, and uh, I really thought you were just saying that because I didn't get the job and you were letting me down easy. And I was like, I, I have no need to let you down easy. What I probably yeah. would have said that was great, thanks, and just move me on. I would, yeah. I, there's no need for me to compliment. I've already got the job, Yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to get the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know? And, and an audition, I really don't have time to babysit, let yeah. alone a session. Right, yeah. you know? right. Yeah. yeah. So, so do most people... Uh, in your world, do they sit or stand? Is there a preference? I would say they stand because you want to... You want to move. And yeah, you, you want to move when you... And, right, yeah. exactly. When you, mm -hmm. you know, even even the smallest of VOs, they don't want you just stagnant and yeah. just reading, you know. But, again, if you've got an eight, uh, longer than a two-hour session, a four-hour session, an eight-hour session, you know, if you want to sit, go for it. But even the people that sit, they're moving yeah. around. They're yeah, of course. Spits like kind of perching. Yeah. You're kind of perching. <laughs> like they're barely yeah. sitting. Yeah. yeah. I like the perch. <laughs> that would be a great little they're video perching. to do one day. It's just yeah. just record actors, uh, w you know, doing VO yeah. in a yeah. booth. Yeah. And just yeah. Yeah, going like yeah. this and all that yeah. stuff. That would be great, yeah. yeah. It's really fun to watch sometimes. Well, invite us to one of your <laughs> one of your sessions, and we'll come and film. I, I'd yeah. love to. The yeah. next session I had, the last session I had was so long ago I don't remember. So the next <laughs> the next gig okay. I booked. Well, you better come on. Book You're something fast, me. man. Well, I've been into on camera for the last few years and developing this show for MTV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I've sort of gone away from voiceover, but it was the last year, maybe two years ago, I directed uh, Chavo. Which is a very famous show in Latin Amer Latin speaking, yeah, Latin American countries around the world. It's a Mexican show. It's been on like forty years. The guy who played Chavo, I think, just died last year, and uh, they finally dubbed it into English. This cartoon, mm. and so I directed that last year. Uh, a show called Tree Fu Tom, which is on NBC. It was on Sprout. Um, it was a, an English show they wanted to dub into American. I never understand that. He's yeah. like the king of dubbing <laughs> now. Right? He's like the yeah, dubber. Like you can't get away from it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, that's part one with Jeff Nimoy. We'll be back next week with part numero dos. Yes, we will. <laughs> Keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you guys. Thanks for watching, and just remember, 
you always have time for a little buzz.